Hey everyone, so we're on our last day of electricity today. This is uh, week four of electricity, and then we can move on to space. Okay, so for this day, we're going to do combination circuits. So this is called a series and parallel circuit. It's a combination because you'll notice that uh, these are in parallel with each other. But when you think about where the battery is, and you're watching where it's going, these electrons are in series with each other. So one and two are in series with each other. One and three are also in series with each other via this path, but two and three are in parallel with each other. So we're going to take a look at what happens when you have circuits that are both in series and in parallel, and how do we use all the rules that we used before for these types of puzzles or these types of circuits, right? So the great thing is we can still use all of these formulas from before. V equals IR, I equals V over R, R equals V over I. So these are really useful. Whenever you have any two pieces, you can always find the last one by using one of these formulas at the top. Okay, so if we've been told voltage, we've been told the current, we can do voltage divided by current, and we can find the resistance. So we can easily say this is 15. So that's fine. That rule is still the same. But then you're obviously looking at everything else and being like, whoa, how can we figure out the other missing pieces. So first what's good to know is that we know the current for the battery is 1.6 amps. Okay, that was told to us right here. So what's great about that is that we know that this is 1.6 amps, so we know that everything in this path, okay, is 1.6 amps, which means that the current going through resistor number one is also 1.6 amps because these are in series. The next way this helps us is we realize that, okay, these are in series with each other, so we, we found out this last piece here. So we know two pieces, which means you know the last one. So we know that the voltage equals this multiplied by this. So I know the voltage here is 16 volts. Okay, so that's how we figured out this piece. Now we gotta figure out, okay, well, how much voltage should be here for those ones, okay? So we realized from last week that any time you're going along a path, and you realize, that's my printer back there, um, you realize that this is 16 volts, okay? You know that this is 24 volts, okay? And we realized a lot last week that when you're talking about things in series, if this is 16, this is unknown, this is 24, it would make a lot of sense if this was 8 volts, right? Because 16 plus 8 is 24 right? Because these are in series with each other, so we learned that things that are in series, they're always going to add up to uh, what's coming out of the battery. What's also true is you could think about it this way. If this is 8 volts, okay, you also know that this path, these are in parallel with each other. Okay, and from what we learned about last week, we realized that, oh, whenever things are in parallel, they actually have the same voltage. Okay, which makes sense because if this is 8 volts for this path here, okay, that's 16 volts, this is 8 volts, adds up to the 24 volts. So it passes both rules. It passes the test of parallel always being the same. So 8 volt, 8 volts, right? These are in parallel with each other. They're both getting 8 volts. It also passes the series test, which means that this and this added together, 16 and 8 have to be 24. 16 and 8 have to be 24. So it passes kind of both tests, if you will, right? And then we can figure out the other missing piece here. We can say anytime we have any two pieces, you can always find the last piece. So we can say that voltage divided by resistance, we can say 8 divided by 10. Okay, so we can get 0 0.8 amps, 0 0.8 amps, and we're good. 
So because these have the same resistance, it makes a lot of sense that the current would split perfectly in half between each path. So you have 1.6 amps uh, coming out of the battery, and then it splits into path 1 and path 2, and so each path is getting 0 0.8 amps. Okay, so let's take it a few more examples. So another thing to notice as well, if you're having trouble with any of this, use the website, okay? It is possible to use all the formulas and all the skills you've been learning so far to figure this out, but if you ever get lost, right, remember the whole point of teaching you how to use that website is that you can simulate each of these. You can change the light bulb resistance, you can change the, um, the battery, the voltage coming out of the battery. So for all of these examples, if you get super lost and you're like, whoa, combination circuit is really hard, remember, you've been given a tool, right? So first, the challenge is, can you do it without using the simulation? But if you get stuck, the simulation will kind of solve it for you, and you could find some missing pieces to help you figure out the rest, okay? So here we've been told the voltage and the current. So anytime you've been told two of these, you can always find the last one. So here we get some kind of strange decimals, but we do this divided by 1.8, and we get 13.3. It repeats forever. Um, yeah, sorry about the weird decimals, but it happens in electricity a lot. And so we can think about some things so far. So first we know that um, there's 1.8 amps coming out of this battery. So if this is 1.8 amps, this must also be 1.8 because these are in series with each other. Okay, so because they're in series, I'm going to say 1.8 amps. That's fine. Anytime I have two pieces, I can always find the next piece. So this is 1.8. This is 10. So I can figure this out as 18 volts. Okay, what's also great is that we've realized number 2, 3, and 4. These are all in parallel with each other. Okay, so because they're in parallel, we know that the voltages have to match. So they must all be 6 volts all the way down. Okay, and once we know that this is 6 and this is 10, then we can calculate the current going through each path. So we can say 6 divided by 10, so that's 0 0.6 amps, 0 0.6 amps, 0 0.6 amps. Okay, which makes sense. All these bulbs are identical. The resist resistance in every path is the same. So it makes sense that the resistance of 1.8 would be split into three equal sizes. Right, so 0 0.6 amps, 0 0.6, 0 0.6, those all add, add up to 1.8. So all of these parallel paths should add up to the total for the battery of 1.8, and then you're done. Okay, taking a look at our last one here, we have um, another example where you commonly know the voltage from the battery, because you pick the battery yourself, right? So here again, we've been given the voltage for the battery, given the current, and then we're asked to find resistance. So again, resistance, we're going to divide these. So 24 divided by 1.44. Again, sorry for the weird decimals, um, but there we have it. You just divide them and you're good to go. And we've been asked again, what is the current going through here? So as you've discovered by now, if this is 1.44 amps, it makes sense that this is in series as well. So this would also be 1.44 amps. Okay, and that means we can find the voltage. So voltage is this multiplied by this. So this would be 14.4 volts. Okay, we've been asked to find the voltage for the third piece. So because these are in parallel, okay, so put a parallel here, um, they're in parallel with each other, which means that's 9.6, so this is 9.6. If you're not quite sure, like, whoa, does this make sense? Again, use the simulation, but also we can check to make sure 9.6 plus 14.4 should equal to 24, right? So we're thinking this is 14.4, this is 9.6, it makes sense that it adds up to the 24. So we can kind of feel good about that. If we're thinking about the current, um, how does the current get split up between these paths? Well, 
You notice probably the reason we have weird numbers of decimals is that this resistance and this resistance are different. So this one has a resistance of 20, this one has a resistance of 10. Um, so let's calculate the current for each. So current we know is this number divided by this number. So we're going to do 9.6 divided by 20. So this is 0 0.48. Okay. And then we do 9.6 divided by 10. So this is 0 0.96. And so what you've realized is that electrons take the path of least resistance whenever possible. So this has a resistance of 10 on this path. This has a resistance of 20. So electrons are far more likely to take this path. Okay. So when they, you have 1.44 coming through here. Here, let me just write it on top. 1.44. So you have 1.44 amps coming through here, okay? This path has more resistance, so yes, electrons will go this way, but more of them are going to go this way, okay? Because it has half the resistance compared to here, okay? And then as the electrons travel through, okay, these paths connect up again here, so this is 1.44 as well. Okay, so this is 1.44 amps, 1.44 amps. It splits into two because of the resistances. It does not get split evenly because there's a different resistance here and here. Okay, so what you're going to take a look at for your homework is you have an activity to try. You have a little worksheet, very similar to last time, but now all the circuits are combination. And then at the very end, you're going to attempt to design your own. Okay, so at the end of that worksheet, it says make your own combination circuit below, add at least five different bulbs, and take a little screenshot. Okay, so it's easy to take a screenshot, right? You can do this worksheet online, so you do a little print screen, um, add that into your document, so it'll just show the activity, so you'll have the battery, right? It will be actual pictures of the battery, and you'll show me your little light bulbs, right? And um, show me where you put everything, okay? And show me the solution, okay? So I think once you get an idea of, you know, obviously I need to put another bulb somewhere in here, but um, draw me a circuit, show your numbers for everything, and um, they don't have to be nice and pretty numbers, just show me that you've collected them, right? It can be really hard to make all of your numbers um, really nice, like for example, this first question, we had numbers that were pretty nice, like these are kind of straightforward. Um, I do know when you try the activity yourself, you'll get a lot of like decimal three repeating and like some weird numbers, it's okay. I just kind of want to make sure that you have a sense for what is a combination circuit and kind of the interesting things that can happen. Okay, so try the worksheet that's there. Okay, so it, it looks something like this. It is possible to do it without the program, uh, but I do think the program will really help whenever you get stuck because um, this is kind of tricky to learn how to do it for the first time, so feel free to use that online app. Okay, thanks everyone. That was all of electricity, so next week we're going to be starting space, so something totally new. So if this was not your jam, physics is not your thing, that's cool. Uh, next week is all going to be space, so we'll start space for a month, so that should be really cool. Okay, bye everyone.